Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to solve this equation with rational terms. And a lot of us really don't like solving equations or even doing any kind of math with fractions or rational terms. And what I want to kind of say to you is, it's okay, neither do I. What we can do is get rid of these rational terms by multiplying by our common denominator. And it's not important just not to use the common denominator, but the least common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I need to look at what are all my denominators for all of my terms. Well, I have x1, x squared plus 7x. So a lot of times when finding the common denominators, what we could do is just multiply all the denominators by each other, and that would at least give us a common or at least a common denominator. But I want to find the least common denominator because I don't want to do extra work. And what I notice is x divides into x squared plus 7x. So actually, x squared plus 7x is my least common denominator. So now, once I know my least common denominator, to eliminate my denominators, I can multiply each one of my terms. And I've got to make sure I multiply every term by my least common denominator, which is x squared plus 7x. So I'm going to multiply every term times x squared plus 7x. And it's really important for you to understand you have to multiply every term by x squared plus 7x to, equate, to keep equivalent equations in your solution. So now, let's just work from left to right. So I have x squared plus 7x times 1 is obviously just going to leave me with x squared plus 7x. And I'll keep this down here. I'll do this again. Divided by x equals, now, I can put, remember, this is as your numerator. This is like x squared plus 7x over 1. So I know this is kind of badly, you know, kind of tightly written in there. But you can see you're just going to multiply your numerators, and your denominator is just going to be 1 times 1, which is 1, which we don't really need to write. So 3 times x squared is 3x squared, and 3 times 7x is a positive 21x. Then over here, again, as I said, you can rewrite that as x squared plus 7x divided by 1. Well, when you multiply this across, what you notice is these are going to cancel, not really cancel, but they divide into 1. And 1 times 7 is just going to leave you with a 7. So as we look at this, we notice that x divides into both of these terms, leaving me with x squared plus 7 equals 3x squared plus 21x plus 7. And here's where it gets interesting, all right? Because a lot of students at this point, they understand how to solve equations when that's an x, not an x squared. A lot of students understand how to solve equations when it's linear. And even if they have multiple x's, they say, oh, um, I combine like terms and get my variable by itself, right? It makes sense. They have a lot of practice with it. But once I have and x squared, i got to remember I'm dealing with a quadratic, and there's different ways to solve it. Isolating the variable is not always going to work. We have to sometimes look into factoring, completing the square, quadratic formula, solve by graphing, a lot of different methods that we can use to find our values of our x's. But the important point is if we can't solve by the square root method or like isolating our variable, getting it to one variable, then what we're going to do is we're going to have to use the zero product property. So for what I'm going to do here is I can combine some of these x's together. I notice since x and 21x, those, are lin those have the linear factor of x, so I can combine them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this to equal to 0, so I can use the zero product property. So I'm going to get rid of the x over here. And remember, I can only subtract the x from the, uh, from the 21x and the 7 from the 7, because those are both like terms. So now this gets to 0 equals 3x squared plus 20x. All right. So now once I have it in this term, I can look to all my different methods. I have it equal to 0. I can say, all right, now what are all the different methods I can use to solve? And in this form, I'm going to use factoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, what terms can I you know, factor out to solve for this? Well, I can say 0 equals x times 3x plus 20. Then, by using the zero product property, I could say x equals 0 and 3x plus 20 equals 0. Now, by solving for x, this is already solved for x, I'll subtract 20, so I get 3x equals negative 20, divide by 3, x equals 
negative 20 divided by 3. So I have two solutions, but it's very important for us to understand that I multiply by an x squared plus 7x, leaving an opportunity for extraneous solutions. So what I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to keep this video short, but what I'd have to do is take both of my solutions and plug them back into this equation in for x to make sure they work. And what happens, what you'll see is actually x equals 0 is an extraneous solution. So our only solution for this problem is x equals negative 20 divided by 3. There you go. Thanks.